Welcome to The Exchange. I'm Guy Schoen, bringing you the biggest news and interviews from all around the business world. Coming up on the show, tech firms have their heads in the cloud, with companies set to spend billions on big data this year. And how far will companies go to protect the privacy of their users? We head to Hong Kong, where that particular tug of war is more fragile than ever. Whether we like it or not, technology is changing the way big corporations store the information they hold about our lives. There was the punch card in the 19th century, a floppy disk in the 1950s, and the USB flash drive in the early 2000s. But now cloud technology, the practice of storing data remotely rather than on local servers or computers, is fast becoming the norm. And companies are betting big on this virtual future. Well, spending on big data and analytics solutions is fast approaching a value of $215 billion. Well, that figure is set to grow nearly 13% by 2026. And IT services and software solutions are the two biggest segments companies are looking to expand. Cloud technology means data is accessible anytime and anywhere there's internet access. Experts say that as cloud tech improves, the service will become less and less expensive. One company that spent billions of dollars investing in cloud technology in recent years is Cisco. Chintan Patel, who's chief technology officer in the UK and Ireland, joins me now. Chintan, other industries are scaling down spending as uncertainty still lingers. How is Cisco keeping to its plan of wanting to expand its cloud business? Providing the right solutions for our customers at the right time. And, and that focus is, you know, right now very heavily around hybrid work. What the conversation really is about now is around the, the way applications and services are consumed more digitally, which is led through applications. You know, the urgency to, and, and need to connect remote workers, provide collaboration tools, you know, have virtual healthcare appointments, education. You know, that's kind of really driven the transition uh, more so towards cloud in terms of getting scalability and agility. And so the idea is, is trying to find the best mix uh, of technology and be able to allow our customers to manage those environments in a, in a secure way. Thanks, Jintam. So as Cisco's UK chief technology officer says, the firm is turning uncertainty from the pandemic into opportunity to stay committed to serving its customers. Well, the business of big data is booming, but concerns remain about what companies do with the information they collect on us. There's always a risk of a data breach. We've seen it with credit card companies and telecommunication services. So how safe are we really in storing our information in the cloud? And how far should governments be putting pressure on big tech companies to protect people's data? I put this to Daniel Newman, founding partner and principal analyst of Futurum Research, who joined from New York. There's a bit of a uh, bifurcation in market perception here. So I know we're trying to change laws globally to regulate more more stringently. But at the same time, I think there's a real trick, uh, tricky situation for regulators and governing uh bodies around the world to figure out how do we keep consumers happy, but concurrently regulate big tech in a way where they're forced to, to be more transparent, to be more open in how they collect and utilize data, or just in general, what companies might know about us that could be harmful or, of course, can be very beneficial from their standpoint of go to market. Interesting points. There are delicate balance of regulating tech firms, but also ensuring the benefits of new technology. The data and privacy tug of war is more fragile in places like Hong Kong, which has seen widespread anti-government protests. Authorities recently changed its online privacy law to what it says protects people from doxing, which is the act of maliciously exposing a person's data online. But critics, including big tech firms, are questioning if it's a tool against the freedom of expression. And how do Hong Kongers feel about all this? Joel Flynn finds out for us. Well, Guy, Hong Kong has been considered a gateway to China for well over 100 years, but changes that are happening here are threatening to put its future into question. Data privacy laws are in the midst of a potentially generational shift, and not everyone here thinks it's for the better. After authorities successfully quashed the unrest last year, attention swiftly turned to Hong Kong's laws on data, and now a new front has opened up online particularly in the year nine, uh, 2019, uh, there were about 5,000 cases. 
um, where people's personal information and personal data was used uh, in a uh, intimidating way. Now the law has been changed, so doxing is now criminalized. The changes may mean many here have different expectations for data privacy than they did a few years ago. I think it's a bit stricter here than elsewhere, right? Uh, but I still think it can be worked on and tightened up. Talks of a new data law from China are looming over not just Hong Kong, but the whole of Asia. And the implications could be even more significant. The PIPL would apply in Hong Kong or anywhere else in the world if somebody, let's say, in Hong Kong or a company in Hong Kong is providing goods or services to people in China or monitoring their behavior. Hong Kong's government had harbored hopes that the city could become a data and innovation hub in Asia. But with an increasingly complicated web of rules here, data security and privacy may soon look very different. It's time for our regular feature, Business in 60 Seconds, Start the Clock. The US Labor Department releases its monthly jobs report. The US economy has been recouping pandemic job losses, but new COVID variants and vaccine mandates threaten to derail its path to recovery. Despite months of solid rehiring, labor force participation remains short of pre-pandemic levels. The number of active workers in the labor force is still down by about 2.4 million compared to February 2020. The Eurozone reveals retail sales data for the month of December. The holiday season is traditionally a month of robust spending, but a fourth wave of COVID-19 cases hitting the continent may have caused people to stay at home. Rising inflation rates across the region is also biting into consumers' purchasing power. And Walgreens Boots Alliance is out with its fiscal first quarter earnings. The US's largest drugstore chain is continuing to see a rebound of over-the-counter medication for coughs and colds. The mobilization of booster doses and the approval of vaccines for children is also giving the company a lift. Made it. Two seconds to go. So, the cloud race is on. Companies aren't shy to spend big money on big data. And we as consumers find ourselves possibly having to take a small leap of faith to trust storing our whole lives in the cloud. Well, that's all we have time for on this edition of the show. Thanks for watching. Please do check out euronews.com for all your latest business news. And join us again next time on The Exchange.